coming up in today's video. After having the pard on test, I put the scope back on the air rifle and head down to a squirrel feeder I set up back in June for a morning's session on the Grey Menaces. Plus, I have a new flask. Hey guys, today we're going to be shooting the squirrel feeder, although at the moment it's actually a week before I'm going to be shooting the squirrel feeder. I've recently had the PAR 008 on test and you can see that in a previous video. So this morning I've remounted my Hawk scope and the Hawk panorama scope back onto the air arms. So I thought better than just go down the standard range uh, and sight it back in again. I'd actually come down to where I'm going to be shooting it. This is a feeder and a hide I actually built back in June uh, and put in situ, believe it or not. And I've been coming back um, over the last few weeks and months and keeping the nuts topped up, keeping an eye on it. Now I've seen squirrel activity here um, as well. The weather's been pretty crap now for the last couple of weeks. However, I think next week on a day off that I've got, I'm gonna get down here at first light and shoot it. So without further ado, let's pop down, let's get sighted in so we can get cracking with the squirrel video. That little shelf that I put in the hide ready for the bipod actually for this exact mission was a real handy little introduction. So having tightened up the scope and put it straight back on the rifle as you can see here it took me a few shots to get it pretty much bang on the money once again. Right well there we go Scope's back on, a little bit of tweaking to get it exactly where I want it and we're good to go. Let's skip forward to next week and get back in the hide. Just as the sun came up you can see it bathed the area in a glorious orange glow and just as I was taking in that beauty I noticed movement just behind the feeder tree. didn't sound like it in those first two clips but that didn't half go with a pop listen to this it was slow going before we actually got sight of squirrel number two in fact it was an hour and ten minutes later uh, that this one showed up but it danced around on the tree in front of the feeder tree for quite some time before scurrying away and making its way up the branches. But eventually, around 10 minutes later, it made its way to the feeder. You can 
just see there patiently waiting for his turn on the feeder, a beautiful looking woodpecker there on the cross branch. It always amazes me how squirrels seemingly have a look at other dead squirrels on the floor. Pay them a little bit of attention, a little bit of a flick of the tail, but they soon seem happy enough once they've got a nut in the mouth and they just go about their business. This one positioned itself in almost the exact same location as squirrel number one. Notice the woodpecker there not hanging around, he soon was on his toes. Well if he's still watching this video it means that the day went okay as far as I'm concerned. So you'll be pleased to know I've also treated myself to a much sturdier flask this time. So if I drop it it shouldn't smash because it's a stainless steel one. That said, I reckon it's about time we cracked open that flask and had a brew. Well, I've been out to retrieve what we've had so far because as you may be able to hear in the background um, the farmers had a big extension double garage granny annex thing built and the scaffolders have come to remove that scaffolding and although it's still a couple of hundred yards probably behind the feeder uh, they're making quite a racket so uh, and I haven't seen anything for a while so uh, I've managed to bag two squirrels so far um, I'm going to wait it out a little while longer just in case that third one pops back because I have seen three in total and I've also seen a jay bombing around from tree to tree as well so if that makes a return trip hopefully I can send that one crash into the floor. The call of nature and the clanging of scaffolding poles uh, is enough for me to get out, stretch the legs and the back a little bit and I'll wait it out for another hour or so. Right. Well, let's answer that call of nature and get straight back into it. As I actually get back in the hide, and this is probably more look than anything else, but that J made a return trip just above the feeder. So I was able to very quickly dispatch it. I managed to press record on the scope cam, but unfortunately I didn't uh, get it with a camcorder. But you can see through the scope cam when shown in slow-mo that it was an absolutely perfect central chest shot and absolutely dispatched it as quick as anything. That's my first J, that. First ever one in... 20 years or more. Well, that's me chuffed as cheese. I got my very first J. It's only taken a few years. I know that some people find it hard to understand but sometimes I actually just love sitting there 
in the wilderness watching the vast array of wildlife go about its daily business and I think it's also good if you are managing pests in a particular area that other species get to benefit uh, from it. As we watch the third squirrel of the day finally make its way into a shootable location. Now unlike the other two, this one decided to go and sit on top of the box to finish his nut. See ya! Well, we made the third one the last squirrel of the morning. It wasn't the biggest bag in the world, but I did enjoy it here in the woods. And we've certainly done some good saving some of the native birds uh, because we were able to take this bonus jay as well. Hopefully I managed to capture that one through the scope cam. But we've got to head off because I've got to go and get some shopping and bits and bobs for dinner. And then later on this evening, I'm going out with a gamekeeper because I'm chasing my 100th fox for the year. Right. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, then please hit that subscribe button. For now though, take care, stay safe, and as always, happy shooting.